I've heard it sit for a couple of minutes late. That's fine. We are live. We're live? Yep. Okay. Get some materials prepped here. Why don't you tell them about all the fun we I had will. this morning? I will. Okay. So, get these cut up. So we we know that the last uh, videos, last two days of videos, we've had this hum, and Kate and I spent. Um, oh, that's a oh. different hum. <laughs> Air raid sirens came on first Wednesday of the month, so we um, we spent about two hours this morning, um, maybe more than that, actually trying to troubleshoot what that hum is, and we think. After shutting off everything in the building, we think it's actually the microphone. So we're going to try to go uh, risk our lives and <laughs> try to go get one this afternoon, and uh, hopefully that will uh, that will solve what's going on. So what we're going to do this uh, afternoon is we're going to take our frog that we made put together yesterday, and we're going to mount the heel plate first. And then the back slide or the petite slide, and then the, the pearl slide. Put on the um, uh, silver um, underslide or liner, and then put uh, silver pins in to hold those all in place. So it's a lot of work. Not sure we're going to get that far today, but uh, we're going to get started with this. And first thing I'm going to do is get my chisel sharpened up here. You need sharp tools to do this job. Tim and Sarah say hi. Oh, Tim says hi. Sarah says morning. It's afternoon, Sarah. It's afternoon here. She's in another time zone, probably. Is she? I didn't think Nashville was a different time zone. I heard from a friend uh, via email from Taiwan yesterday who's watching, and I've heard from a friend from um, Switzerland who's watching, so this is pretty cool. She is in a different time zone. And Ed uh, Shilato says hello. Hello, Ed. Revelu says good afternoon from Newark, UK. Pretty cool. Okay, I think we're ready to go here. So mm. the first thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to measure the depth of my underslide is about uh, two millimeters. So I'm just going to eyeball that and make a mark just lightly. Don't want to don't want to score that. And then my width of my uh, underslide is. Um, uh, 4.2 millimeters. So I'm going to take that and write down 4.2 millimeters. And then I'm going to measure how wide the frog is right here at this spot. I'm going to, I'm going to, it's a little lopsided here. I've got to reshape this just a little bit. Make it equal on both sides. Tyler says good morning. And Dennis Braun is tuning in again. All right. From Spain. Okay, so we've got that shape looking good. Okay, so 
So now I'm going to measure how wide it is right at that mark. Okay. I actually got to turn on my calipers here. 8.4. So 8.4 minus 4.2. That's pretty easy math. So I'm going to get 2.2 is going to be, actually it's 4.2, so it's 2.1 is going to be, um, I need to make a mark at 2.1 on either side. Okay, so that centers the the um, heel plate and the and the heel of the bow. Okay, the heel of the frog. And then I'm going to take my scribe and I'm going to put a little pin prick on either side, on the inside of that line, just as an easy visual guide. I know I can work up to that mark and still not have to get my caliper out to measure it. Okay, so now I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to make a chamfer here. Just sort of scoop out this material where the heel plate's going to come out. And, and the reason I'm doing that is so when I use my chisel, I'm not going to split out the back. And then I also do the same thing up here. So I'm going to chisel that out. I was working better with that light, that extra light yesterday to help see that. Yeah, so uh, that helps. we're going to get that chamfer on there. Okay, so you see that chamfer there? I'm going to round that off there. So now what I'm going to do is I need to make a line that goes from the inside of the slide track to the inside of my marks or at those marks. And my favorite tool here is this chisel. So I'm going to line this up and I'm going to get that right there. Looks about right. Now I'm just going to wiggle that back and forth. That's just a one inch chisel? It's a one inch chisel. Okay, it's pretty faint, but it's there. Okay. And I'll do the same thing on this side. So now I know I can remove the material between these two marks. Okay, yeah, it's, nice. it's pretty faint, but it's there. So now I can take my chisel here. I'm going to get on my cheaters here. In uh, Chicago, these are affectionately referred to as um, Becker checkers after Carl Becker. He always would uh, use these things. Okay. And I'll keep carving this down until I get this depth somewhere around a half a millimeter, not any deeper than that. Lay the chisel a little flatter because it's not going to jump out now. You, know, you got to be careful because a lot of these surfaces are finished surfaces, so be careful about making a mistake and making a mark. Okay, this side.
to know what the thickness is of the heel plate. Is it a half millimeter? Yeah, um, half millimeter for the for the slide and a half millimeter for the petite slide. And say that right, half a millimeter for the heel plate and half a millimeter for the for the slide. Okay. Now I can start uh, removing the center here. takes a lot of um, hand control so one of the things that you're doing while you're working is you're kind of squashing your elbows against your ribs to help control your hands so you're not gonna make any big movements that you don't want to make So is your heel plate a uh, two-piece heel plate then? This is just going to be one piece. Yes, I'm sorry. One piece, two pieces. Not, not bent. Now I want to take this down to a nice, even half a millimeter depth. Point three, three, four, five. There are some makers that make one piece seal plates, right? Yes. Is that typically a German or a French thing? A little of both. Um, okay, so I think I'm pretty close down here. What do we got? 0.5. Five, 
Okay, I like it. Check and make sure we're flat here. There's no bump in the middle or anything. Okay. If you uh, rub your straight edge, you can see it shines up your flat spots or your high spots, and so it's all it's pretty uniform in there. So I'm, I'm good to go. Okay, so now I take my big chisel here, and I'm going to make my um, uh, crisp up this line and and bring the edges out so it meets the slide track, and then it also meets my um, 2.1 millimeter um, line in here. Tony asked, will we still see any remains of your knife chamfers under the heel? See any of your knife? No. Because this one goes away when you cut the underslide track in. And this one's already gone. So you're not going super deep when you're doing that chamfer? No. In fact, I'm thinking that, okay, this is about a half a millimeter as I'm doing it, so... And get the light right. That's better. Well, as you um, get a chance to see old bows, one um, interesting way to maybe try to identify some bows is to look at where the pins are, if there are any pins, how many pins are in it. And then you can also look at it this way and you can actually see if the, if the, um, the track where the slide goes in is, is angled this way, of course, but sometimes they're also tipped in this way, so it's actually dovetailed in. And makers like Picot would dovetail theirs in and not have any pins. And Sartori also dovetailed his in and only put one pin in. So those are, you know, a couple of things you can look at on some of the older bows. Is there a benefit to doing either of those? Well, you know, I think that a um, heel plate that's dovetailed in is more likely to stay put, for sure. Come on, cut. Okay, so let's take our measurement here, down at that line. So 2.26, so we've got a little ways to go. Probably be 10 per 10 degrees, maybe something like that. It's, it's pretty minor. You don't want it too strong because then it's be pretty obvious when you look here. Uh, Revelo asks, do they often come loose? Heel plates some um, do come off, for sure. Um, A lot of times when, um, if the bow is made in a very, um, when it moves to an environment that has a huge difference in, um, in humidity, um, things can uh, come loose. So one of the things I'm doing here too is I can use my um, chisel blade make it as if it was my heel plate and then I can look and see if I have a gap. I won't be able to show you guys that I don't think. Maybe you can see it. 
I don't think I can zoom in that far. That's as hold it far up like in that. as I can go. Yeah. So that's a, just a visual aid to help get that lined up. So pinning a heel plate would help prevent it from coming off even if the humidity changes? Absolutely. Over time, all of these glue joints are going to um, be challenged just by the fact that the, um, the ebony is going to shrink a little bit. Um, you know, you think about um, just being in a player's hand all the time. It's a pretty moist environment to live in, you know, hours at a time. So, uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to keep all the stuff. Plus, there's uh, something actually about silver that silver is just not a material that likes to stay glued. So... Just checking to make sure my I've still got a straight line here. So we're looking good. Check here one other time. See how close we are. Close. Okay, now we're good here still. Go just to just a tad more. So if somebody was doing a repair and there's a lot of sweat damage on a bow, is there anything that they can do for that? Because a lot of times it discolors the bow. Uh, are we talking on the frog? Yeah, on the frog. Not really. You can... Um, Maybe put a little oil on it. That might darken it up a little bit. It might a little paste wax maybe won't hurt. Okay, one side's done. And let's do the other side. That's good. Getting close. Yeah. Got a ways to go here yet.
check and make sure we're making a straight line here. One of those things, it's done when it's done. Just crisping up the inside quarter. Corners. Yeah, I was making sure that my I continue my floor out so that it's it stays nice and crisp. Alright. Let's say just say one more cut just for fun. Let's see if that works. I do that and it ends up being too wide. And I think that's going to do it. Okay. So now we're going to fit our piece of silver here. Now, choice of materials. If you're using, you know, sterling silver is pretty soft stuff. And um, you want to use a material that has a little bit of a spring to it. This is still a little on the soft side. If you're doing a, a um, uh, heel plate and slide uh, combination like Tourde and Picot, where they had the little petite slide, this piece, silver piece, was attached to the same piece of ebony that the, um, the slide was. And it's really easy when you push this on if there's not a lot of strength in the in the um, in the heel plate, I've seen badly bent heel plates where somebody's pushed in that slide and it just bent it over backwards. So you want to use something that's um, pretty hard if you're going to do um, a slide and petite slide combination. Um, it's not so critical um, if you're gluing this in and it's two pieces. So next thing I'm going to do, since I cut this out with my shears, is I'm going to flatten it. And my favorite, favorite way is instead of to hammer it, and so I'm just going to take my burnisher and crisp it up a little bit. Anytime you work this, the silver, you're actually hardening it too. Okay, and then you can kind of check and see if it lifts up or anything. So this one's laying pretty flat, so. I think we're good to go. So now, take my file. Flatten the inside here. Still not quite flat. And that, this is this, this is the face that's gonna meet the Petite slide. So let's see what we got here. Let's see how much room we have. Oops. Okay, so my angles are pretty good. So now I'm just going to have to start uh, narrowing it down, crisping it up.
Could you talk a bit about the different styles of heel plates? Like maybe torts and... Um, I did. Yeah, well, well, talking about the... The way that they meet the underside? Um, well, torts didn't have underslides, so they just, it goes right through. Picard, it would, it would be covered up by the heel plate. A heel bow actually would go through the heel plate. So those are a few differences there. How about Dodd? I don't know enough about Dodd to make any comments. But about the top that. of his heel plate was wider than the bottom facet of the underside, wasn't it? Um, sometimes they covered up these little corners here, so, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a lot to say about that one. Actually, not Dodd, that would have been Tubb. Tubbs, I'm James Tubbs. Tubbs, the top of the heel plate was wider than the bottom facet of the underside. Oh, yeah, so if you look at a, a James Tubbs, the bottom was wide, so you actually had two little prongs on either side of the of the heel of the heel plate that went down alongside the um, um, the underslide. Okay. This got fit really well and really fast. I'm pretty pleased with that. Take a couple more cuts on this. We're only at 32 minutes. Well, we've got time to do the petite slide then. Just taking the burr off there. You want to make sure this goes in far enough that you um, uh, that it's going to meet the underslide. Uh, one thing you can do as far as the fit is concerned is press it in just a little bit, not all the way, and then see if it'll lift up at the back, at the, at the slide end, or if you can lift it up here at the, um, um, at the bottom of the frog and that'll help you know whether or not you've got a nice fit on this. I'm actually dovetailing mine in like a, like a picot. Square that up a little bit. Maybe go in just a little bit farther. Okay, so now we get to fit the petite slide. So one of the things I do is um, I will glue um, a, a piece of silver onto a, an ebony um, piece of ebony long enough so that I can fit many slides. Um, so that uh, it's just easier to get your angles right if it's a longer piece. So I can slide this in. This one happens to be a little thicker, so I'm going to not use this one and move on to another one. Let's see what this one is. This one's, one's too narrow. And this is one think is going to fit here. So the height is right and I think we can make this work. So um, again this the thickness of this is half a millimeter and um, interestingly I was repairing a Sartori frog once 
somebody pushed the slide in backwards, and since it's wider at this end than this end, it's it split the rail off, and the little petite slide came loose, and um, so it's interesting that Sartori pinned the slot the petite slide to the ebony, but he didn't pin it to the whole frog, which was kind of interesting. If you were making it, if you were pinning it afterwards, obviously you would be pinning through the frog as well, which is what you see most of the time. So let's go ahead and file this. And so I know that my angles are really good on this, so I'm going to take two swipes on one side and then flip it around and go the other way because the file, as you're filing it, you each time you file, you will be turning it a little bit because it's going to cut more here than it does here. So we want to keep it going in evenly. Okay. Looks good. You might want to use a little uh, eyepiece too to, to check it if you need to. Antonio Marcus Miranda wrote, Hello, I would like to thank you for the precious information shown here by you. Here in Brazil, we do not have this privilege. Oh, well, you're most welcome. We're going to need a world map and start putting pins in it. <laughs> okay, it's looking good here, I think. Okay, I'm going to take two more swipes off of this side. And I'm going to clean up the bottom here just in case I got a little burr or something. Looks good. Okay, it's in there. I like it. So now what I'm going to do is take my slide out, or my heel plate out, and push my slide through the back. Tony asked, how thick is the ebony liner? Um, well, my it's about a millimeter. It's just whatever thickness it needs to be to um, try to make this as flush as possible. So now I can file this off. Forcing it back. Yeah, I'm pushing it through, and that way I can file it so that it's uh, going to be um, the same angle as the back. Hopefully, it's square like we we made the frog originally. I'm gonna clean this up. We kind of need to have the nice filed surface here too so you can see how well we're doing on our fit. Okay, slide that in. Hold it together and see what it looks like. Alright, so I'm holding something up here. Jack Estefan said, hello, Rodney again from Lebanon. If you may just save when you can without disturbing your frog making. The difference between French and German 
uh, baseball camber. Baseball camber? I actually use the same camber. Do you just use it at a different spot on your camber template? Nope. It's same. the exact same camber. Same camber. Of course, the difference the, is the head height and the frog height, right? Yeah, the French bow is, uh, it's kind of funny because the, the, the head on a French bow is much taller than the head on a German bow. I got to get my, I don't have my floor quite, uh, quite right here. It's not quite deep enough. Um, so French bow, tall head, short frog. And then, of course, it's the opposite with a, a German bow. we got a short head and a tall frog. And it turns out the distance between the hair and the stick is about the same, um, but just reversed, if that makes sense. Because you still have to have this if everything's too high you've got you don't have any stability so you want to try to keep it from getting um, out of control okay just it just a tad more I can live with that It's awful nice when it comes together and it looks to like it's just one piece. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe just the tiniest, tiniest bit of a gap on this side. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And let's see how long my slide's going to be on this. Just barely made it. I'm going to cut off this excess ebony. I want to be real careful not to break this glue joint between these. It's kind of a pain in the butt. If you do. here and I'm just gonna split this ebony off of the bottom
I'm going to have uh, about a millimeter, millimeter and a half um, overhang of silver so that the tail end of the uh, slide, pearl slide, can get in there. All right, try squaring this up. file here and clean it up. Test it. Correct it just a little bit. Screwing around here. That's good. All right, let's take a burr off of the back of that. Again, this is it's it's right when it's right. All right, that's good. So it's right? It's right. Okay. Now I just go ahead and uh, let me just try my file here. And I it. Let's clean up our silver. Tony asked, is there any angle on the silver edge facing the butt of the slide, or is it completely square? Um, completely square because if you angle it, if I'm if I'm hearing you right, uh, hang on a second here. So if your heel plate, if this angle isn't perfectly square on this little piece, and you have it a little bit like this, as you file it down after it's all together, that gap will start to open up. So it really has to be uh, a, a, a you know a good butt joint. Um, I am going to go ahead and open this up just a little bit here still. And then I would say the same thing on the front here too. You want that nice and crisp because um, you know you want all of your joints to look seamless. Um, you can bevel the ebony away a little bit. Um, that makes it a little easier to fit. 
Uh, I don't glue the heel plate in until I've got the, the petite slide fit because um, I just want to make sure that everything's in there perfectly straight. So, um, so I will glue this on now and um, I don't take it apart. I, I get it all together so I got it exactly the way I like it. And then I use my thin CA glue Of course, it's plugged up. Tyler asked, this is silver and ebony, right? You just had one almost ready to size? Yes, because, I mean, the heel, the, the petite slide, mm -hmm. it's because I made that one last night. And then basically they're the same frog, so. Um, might have just a little teeny bit of debris on there. So usually your thing that the petite slide was on is longer, so you can get multiple bows out of it. Right. Yeah, I might start with a piece that's, uh, you know, maybe 30, 40 um, millimeters long. So that glue has gone right down, and you can actually, I can actually see it in here. So... This glue, if you're holding something together and you can put one drop on it and it's good. Second drop on it, it starts to go, you can see it run away. The third drop comes off of your elbow. So it's really, um, it's really thin and it, it'll go everywhere. So you've got to be, you know, never overdo it. And I've had to take them apart after I've glued them for one reason or another, and the glue gets in there. So I'm not worried at all about how well it got glued up. I got a little of my slide track here. Um, Jack Estefan asked, whenever you need to sharpen your small chisel, would you please show us? Sure. I'm going to let that dry for a minute. I, this thing's ready to be sharpened, so let's do that. We're at 53 minutes, so we can take more questions. Well, let me. Well. Okay, let me let me finish this, and I'm glad we're at that sort of stopping point here. I can just spend a few minutes sharpening. So, this is one of those um, DMT, I think it is, um, um, diamond stones. It's a combination, and I think it's uh, I don't know, coarse and fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, you can get a jig that will hold this, or you can do it by hand. So I don't, I always just draw one direction. Um, it's really easy to, to rock it. I don't like um, grinding my tools any more than I have to. Tim. Uh, just because, uh, you know, you paid a lot of money for that steel, why uh, make it all go away in sparks, so. Okay, so I'm just going to go far enough that I'm going to raise a burr. You can feel this sort of jagged edge or rolled up. Okay. So it really, you know, only only took a couple of strokes. My um, these are my my frictionite stones that I would use at my bench here. Um, if I'm going to use a water stone, um, Norton makes a pretty good stone that's um, a combination four thousand and eight thousand grit, and I think for the money they're really good. Um, I would get two stones. So this is a this is a coarse stone on this frictionite stone. OK. 
Okay. So why would you have two, two of the Norton stones? So I have two of them. See, I have two of these stones, so I get them wet, and I can rub them together, and it, it cleans the stone, and it also makes a slurry, which actually makes it cut a little bit better than, um, than if I just cleaned it. Okay. Polish up the bottom side here. This ebony is super hard on chisels. These I had hardened at a Rockwell 60. I think if I did it again, I might go to like 61. There's a trade-off. You can make it super hard and not be able to sharpen it, or you can make it so you can sharpen it. And um, so that 61, 62 is getting really hard hard to sharpen. So I'm going to just draw it back like this. This is on the fine. This is probably equivalent to about 10,000. Trying to get that all the scratches out from the previous side and then I'll, I'll only pull backwards Same with this. Yeah, it's good enough. Kind of dangerous shaving with it, but it will. Okay, that's it. So why don't we take a 15 minute break here and um, we'll come back and we'll fit the um, Pro slide on this. Okay. All right, we'll see you in a bit.